Hello, and welcome to the Alaska Microgrants application for organizations. Now, if you have been following us over the last year or so, we did not do a previous organization video because it was the same as the individuals. But this year, there are two separate applications, so we just wanted to let the organizations know and not feel left out. So here is your very own video. Now, if you had applied previously, you would just put the email in that you have been using with the password and log in directly. Now, for the purposes of this, I am going to act as a brand new orga organization applying for the first time. So we're gonna go down to register. And then it asks, are you an individual or an organization? And we just want to reiterate, it will definitely ask you this further on, but organizations for the purposes of this grant is cities, nonprofits, tribes, and education facilities, or pretty much the essentials. LLCs need not apply. And then it's just gonna ask you a few qualifying questions. Are you in good standing with the state of Alaska? I hope so. Is your project based in the state of Alaska? Since this is the Alaska micro grants, it does have to be based in Alaska. And then it's going to ask you which of these organizations you are. For the purposes of this testing one, I'm gonna choose a nonprofit, a made up nonprofit, by the way, so don't judge. And then I'm gonna have my nonprofit be a food pantry. Hit submit. And then it's gonna do an organization search and it brings you to this page. For this, less is more. It does give you a few different fields, but honestly, just put the EIN and then hit search and you have a better chance of your uh, organization being found. Now, again, I am using a fake one because I do not want to use a real one for this test. And so I would put it in and then hit search if I can find the mouse. And of course it says no records found. And if I was a legit one, it would come up right here and you would click right into it. Because it isn't, it's not there. And I'm gonna be completely honest, this, the way that this searches, chances are the legit nonprofits will be in there, but schools, tribes, and some cities might not show up. So we do have this workaround for you guys. And you would just click here, and then you would enter all the information in manually. If your EIN had shown up, you'd be able to skip this step essentially, but because it's not there, you do get to do this. So my So then you're just going to go through, you put the name, the address, everything fills out, and then it's going to ask you for the EIN. And then the contact information. So this would be as your project coordinator who that would be. Um, I messed that up. And it's going to ask you for an email and it's going to have to be one that you have access to as the project coordinator because it's going to send you a link to actually fill, um, you would log in, choose your password and all that stuff at that time. Now if, your pass, now if your email or your address is different than your organization, like you're based, maybe your organization is based in California but is still licensed to work in Alaska and you yourself are based in Alaska, you would up, make sure that your contact is updated if it is different. And then that just goes through, not a robot, today anyway, 
on this one right now. No. Keep losing it. And then once you know registration is complete and then an email has been sent. So then I get to go into my handy dandy email. And then here is your activation link. It does expire within 24 hours. If you're not able to get into it within that 24 hour window, if you use the second link and then say forgot password, you can bypass all this and reset your password and you can still get in. But since we are within the 24 hour window, we are going to stick within that. And you're just going to pick a password. Hopefully it's one that you recognize. You will remember. Let's see. Oh. Um. And so you just go through that. And if you're lucky, you will not be a robot and it will take you to the home page. So this is what the home page looks like. And as you can see, it has my profile, organization profile. If you're returning users, you might have to fill these out before it lets you submit your application without it not fully being filled out. Now it is mandatory, but because we just registered and we put all this information in, this is a st step, except for maybe my profile doesn't have a zip code. So we are just going to put in a zip code. And then comes down here. And once again, it does tell you if you're an individual, apply as an individual, if you're an organization. And then once again, we do give you the types of organizations that are eligible to apply. And then we are gonna go down here and apply as organization. First thing you want to do, save, because then it will pull in all of that information that we have previously entered. And so there's your organization mailing address and then the project address. If your project address is different, you can just overtype all of this. The main thing to know is that your project address cannot be a PO box. We do need a physical address. And then we really want to make sure that your EIN is legit, so we're going to have you enter it in the actual application as well. And then you're just going to go through and you're going to fill this out. It's pretty much similar if you did do the previous application for organizations. It was there. Uh, we have cleaned it up a little bit. It's not quite as clunky. And so you're just going to go... Yes, and make sure that it is your organization EIN and not your own if you don't have, if you have your own organization or if you're a LLC, you're not allowed to enter your, uh, your EIN. So it's your organization's EIN. And then request amount. Organizations can request up to $10,000 that hasn't changed from the last one. And so you would just enter in how much you would like to request. And then the next one is the project summary and 250 words. We just kind of want to know what your project is about. And so you would just enter in a little summary there to let us know. And then the next one would be choosing your direct beneficiary's location. So it's based off of census area. If you're not entirely sure which census area you're located in, we have the map. And you would just kind of figure out 
based off of this map, which census area it is. And then you would go back here and choose whichever census area your project is located. And then from here, we have these projects. These are the projects that you will be limited to. You, we don't have other this time, and so you do have to go through and figure out which one best applies to your project that you want to do. So like extending growing season, if you want to build a greenhouse, that's the one that you want. And then the project purpose here is we just want to know what you're planning on doing. And so you would just go in and it is limited to 3,000 characters or less. And so just a short little paragraph letting us know what the project purpose is. And then it's going to ask number of direct beneficiaries. So if you're doing this for a school, then the number of kids for the school. If you're doing this for a community, about how many people are in the community. The indirect beneficiary, so are those kids going to share it with their parents or are those people in the community going to take the food and share it outside the community? So that's what indirect beneficiaries is and so we'll just say that. And then have you ever been recipient of a microgrant? If it's yes, you would click yes. If not, then you hit yep, no, and then just Keeping it safe, we're just going to hit save before we move on to our outcomes. And the outcomes, we just want to know how do you plan to report your outcomes, basically. We just want to know that you have thought about what the final reporting is going to be and how you plan to report at the end of the year. So just a quick little draft on that which will lead you to your budget. And then you would just fill out only what applies to you and keeping in mind that your budget does have to match whatever you asked for. So I asked for 7,500, so my budget is going to have to be 7,500. So we're gonna do equipment and I'm going to do a fancy greenhouse. That I'm going to purchase. Now this gives me some money to play with that I can contract out or in my case I'm just gonna add in some supplies. And basically you would just kind of like Break it down, not necessarily every single line item, don't have to list nails and things like that, but just kind of give a running tally of what you think your supplies might be. And then if you hit save, you will see that it auto-populated. So have 6,000 in equipment, we're good. 1,500 in supplies, total 7,500. Are good to go. And then matching funds verification, this is just a written statement by you, the project coordinator, or if you have a financial manager who might have to sign it. It's just something saying that you guys acknowledge that you are going to have to match 10% of the funds. And then you would upload it. and then move on. And so then we have longevity plan. And so basically it's just like, what are the long-term objectives of your project? Are you hoping that this will be sustainable for the next five to 10 years? Or is this a one year kind of deal? Just something that lets, lets us know that you have thought about the future. And then move on to acknowledgement. And you would just put your initials as you go through um, and acknowledge release of liability, reporting, all the stuff. Obviously, read through it at your, as you're going through um, before you just 
sign off on it. But then you go through and sign it. And then do one final save. And then if I did this correctly, it should go through and submit. If I miss something, it will definitely let me know. See, so I forgot to check because I put equipment in that I actually read what we, you'll be reporting on and all of that fun stuff. And there's a statute there that with the link, just go through and look at what applies. The good news is, I don't know if you did last time, but the last application, you had to check all of these for travel, for fringe benefits, even if you didn't put anything in there. So we did make it nicer for you guys where it's only the ones that actually apply to you. And then we hit submit. And this time, we are good to go. It has moved over to submitted there. And if you look here, it also says submitted. So there you guys go. That's all you need to do. And we'll, if you have any further questions, you can email the email address that is up on the screen and reach out with any further questions. Thank you. Bye.